So in this video, we're going to consider the landforms and processes that we find at constructive plate boundaries, also known as divergent plate boundaries, because this is where two sections of the Earth's lithosphere, two of the Earth's tectonic plates, are moving apart from each other. Now, there's two settings where this can occur, either oceanic oceanic boundaries, where we have two bits of oceanic crust separating, or continental continental boundaries, where two bits of Yes, continental crust are separating. And in each of those situations, different processes occur um, and different landforms um, are created as a result of those processes. We're going to start by thinking about oceanic oceanic boundaries um, to begin with. This is where two bits of oceanic lithosphere um, are separating. Now, if we have a look at this um, simple animation here, we can see that as the plates are separating, new crust is being created along that boundary. Uh, we get volcanic activity building up um, layers of new rock on the seafloor. And we also get earthquakes happening as well um, along that plate boundary. In reality, the system is a little bit more complicated than we can see in this, in this diagram, but this gives you a rough idea about what's going on. The plates are separating and new crust is forming in place of um, the gap that is left behind. So one of the first things to understand about oceanic oceanic boundaries is why the magma escapes in the first place. And this is because um, as the lithosphere splits apart and as it spreads in two directions, the lithosphere along the boundary itself becomes thinner and it stretches out. Um, it doesn't actually create um, a nice little gap like we can see here. Um, but what does happen is it gets thinner and thinner at this point until um, the magma within the asthenosphere um, experiences lower pressure as a result of that stretching of the lithosphere and it melts. And that molten magma is then forced out of the crust and it builds up in layers on the sea floor. So it's all to do with the pressure being reduced as a result of the lithosphere getting thinner along um, that central part of the plate boundary. What we can also see is that the crust doesn't separate in one nice even section all the way along. Um, we've got kind of three blocks here. Um, we've got three blocks here, one there, a second one there, and a third one there. And each of those blocks, although they are all moving in the same direction, in this case, they are all moving um, from uh, left to right. One bit might be moving more quickly or slowly than another bit. So if, for example, we were to find that um, section number three here was moving faster than section number two here, what would happen as a result of that is we'd end up with lots of friction occurring along that boundary between those two little slabs of crust. We'd also get some friction happening um, along this section here between section one and section two, and the same on this side um, of the plate boundary as well. We call these little intersections, these little um, sections of the crust moving side by side, we call them transform faults. A transform fault um, is where you have two bits of crust that are moving parallel to each other, a bit like a conservative plate boundary. So the friction is building up um, between those bits um, of the crust. If we look at this image of the, the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we can see that the plate boundary runs all the way down um, the middle of that image there. But actually, we can imagine that that is not breaking apart as one slab. Um, you can even see some lines coming off here, uh, which we can think about as representing some of these transform faults. So again, if we had three sections of the crust, one, two and three. If number two was to move a little bit slower and number three was to move a little bit quicker in that direction, then we're going to get some friction building up along that stretch of the plate boundary here and along that stretch of the plate boundary there. So that's why we get earthquakes at um, constructive plate boundaries, because as the oceanic crust separates, it doesn't do so as one mass of rock. It separates in lots of little sections. Those sections are separated from each other by these transform faults. And 
um, the friction between those transform faults is what generates earthquakes. So as a located example of this, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a great example of where this is happening. Um, the photo down the bottom here um, shows you part of Iceland, actually, where that plate boundary cuts right the way through Iceland. And on um, one side of that plate boundary, we have the Eurasian plate. And on the other side, we have the North American plate. Um, and those two plates are moving in opposite directions. And as a result of that, we've got this um, this rift forming and this um, this plate boundary separating uh, at that point. So the Atlantic Ocean is actually growing um, by a few centimeters every year. It's getting wider and wider as those plates plates separate. In this animation here, we can see that process unfolding. That as the lithosphere separates, the lithosphere along the boundary itself gets thinner. As it's stretched apart, that molten rock um, is able to rise um, and escape through the crust and it builds up on the ocean floor and it builds up to form these distinct ridges that run down the center um, of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, these ridges are actually several thousand meters high um, in comparison to the crust around them. Now this animation here again shows you a little bit more about those transform faults. Um, so they're sliding horizontally past each other. So we can think about the plate boundary um, here. One plate is moving left, one is moving right. And if we keep our eye on this transform fault in the middle, we'll see um, that along this section where we've got this parallel movement of one bit of rock relative to another, um, that that is going to generate lots of friction um, and that is why we're going to get earthquakes along this plate boundary. These earthquakes are not very big in magnitude. Um, we're not talking about um, you know magnitude six, seven, eight earthquakes. They tend to be relatively small um, but we do get earthquakes associated with the separation of this crust. Now the second type of constructive plate boundary is where two bits of the Earth's continental crust is um, is separating. Now what we can see here um, in diagram A is that originally perhaps we had some continental crust and beneath it um, maybe a hot spot um, or a plume of magma underneath the crust. What's that? What's, what that's done is it's caused the crust above it um, to be forced upwards. We call it up warping on here. Imagine it bending upwards. That's creating lots of cracks and weaknesses within it. Maybe that's allowing some volcanic activity to occur. Um, and over time, that hot spot will um, subside or well, the crust will move away from the hot spot. And rather than it being forced upwards, it will start to sink. Um, as it starts to sink, that continental crust is being pulled and stretched in two directions here and here. And the continental crust subsides, creating um, a valley, what we call a rift valley, in between the two bits of continental crust. This isn't a valley that's been carved out by um, a river or a glacier. It's a sunken section of the crust caused as a result of it being stretched in two directions and sinking down in the middle. On the valley floor, the very bottom of the valley, you might find lakes um, where water is collected at the bottom of the valley. You're going to find volcanic activity along the edges um, because that magma is able to work its way out through some of these cracks and weaknesses within the crust. So this is the situation that we find in um, the east of Africa at the moment. I'll say a little bit more about that um, particular location in a minute. But what will eventually happen um, is that that crust will subside so much that it actually um, falls below sea level. Um, and new oceanic crust will actually start to be formed in the middle um, in place of that continental crust. And eventually that ocean will continue to grow in size, as we can see in diagram D here, where the continents that were once joined together have separated and are now um, separated by this huge ocean, uh, maybe with a, an ocean ridge in the middle, um, like we were discussing earlier. So you can think about this process um, as being what 
uh, unfolded in order to separate continents like Europe and North America or Africa and South America. They would want to have been joined together, like in diagram A. They'd have started to separate, like in diagram B. That separation would have continued and a small ocean will have formed, like in diagram C. And then we'd end up with this situation that we have in diagram D, where the continents are on either side of a large ocean and within the middle of that ocean um, is a mid-ocean ridge uh, with new oceanic crust being formed um, at that point. So actually, the separation of continental crust ultimately leads to the separation of oceanic crust. These two boundaries are not necessarily distinct from each other. One actually becomes the other um, in the longer term. Now, we think about applying this to an example. Um, the East African Rift Valley is the, a really good example of where this is happening today. So here, the situation is a little bit more complex. We actually have um, three plates separating at this point. We have the Arabian plate, we have the Nubian plate, and we have the Somalian plate. Um, so actually, those plates are separating in three directions. Um, creating almost like a bit of a y-shaped junction we can see the y-shape if we look at this red section on uh, on this diagram here where one of the rifts runs up the eastern side of east africa and one of them runs up the western side um, of east africa we have volcanic activity in this in this region um, so volcanoes like um, mount kilimanjaro that it mentions in this example here in in tanzania we have um, the volcano Erta Ale in um, Ethiopia that we can see in this picture here. Um, and even um, volcanoes like Mount Niragongo um, over in the western part of that system in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And they're all part um, of this rift system and all being fed by the fact that these two bits of continental crust or these three bits of continental crust are separating. We also find lakes on the floors of the valley. Um, so, uh, for example, um, Lake Victoria um, in Tanzania or Lake uh, Kivu um, just by Mount Niragongo. And eventually what will happen um, is that this part um, of eastern Africa will continue to drift um, eastwards. This part of eastern Africa will continue to drift westwards. And actually in this gap, we will actually have a new ocean forming. Um, so a new ocean will develop and this part of um, Somalia and uh, Tanzania and Kenya, all the way down here, all this section will drift off um, and become a new continent separated by a smaller ocean in between, which will eventually grow into, go into an even larger ocean. So hopefully that summarizes the um, differences between those two plate boundaries. Remember where oceanic crust is separating, we get um, volcanic activity, the lava escaping builds up to form ocean ridges. Where we have continental crust separating, um, the, there is volcanic activity, but the feature being created here is the rift valley as a result of the crust subsiding when it is stretched.